Welcome students. This video is about, we checked the regression assumptions and we have a violation. So what do we do now? The first one that I wanna talk about is the population mean of zero. This shouldn't happen. So if we are actually using the ordinary least squares equation, meaning we have a best fit line, then the population mean of the errors should be zero, meaning half of the errors above the line are positive, half the errors below the line are negative, and they should cancel out to be zero. Shouldn't have a violation there. We could have a violation of normality, meaning the errors should follow a normal distribution. If you watched the last video, then you know that we checked this by running descriptives on the residual term. Remember, residual and error are the same word here. And if the skewness was above a one or below a negative one, then it is not normally distributed. If we violate this assumption, we can say that regression is robust to this violation and we can still use it. Robust means that if we violate this assumption, we are not going to affect the p-values. If it is not robust, that means that if we violate that assumption, then we can affect our significance testing, which is a huge problem. Unless, of course, in some extreme situations, so in the last video, we had a violation that was a skewness of 1.3. That's really pretty close to 1. I might be okay with that and just say it's robust and move on. But if I have a violation that has a skewness of 3 or 4 or even 15, then I'm not going to trust that. I need to fix the problem before I use that regression result. If I have a violation of homoscedasticity, Remember that this has to do with the um, error variance should be consistent throughout. These were the funnels that we were looking at. This is a lot more important that we meet it. If we violate this assumption, we need to do something before we move on. And what we would do here is we would transform the data, meaning we would take the variable and square it or cube it or square root it and just change it to see if we can get that information to now meet the assumption and then we can use it. This is a violation that does affect the power of your significance tests, meaning it is not robust. We can't violate it. We gotta fix it. If we violate independence, meaning the errors term is somehow related to your Y variable, that is a huge problem. You are done with regression. You cannot use that variable, period. There are no other options. You can try transformation, but it doesn't usually work. So I wanna talk first, the easiest way to fix most of these violations um, are because of outliers. And you can have different kinds of outliers and some are more vital than others to consider. For example, if I have our data right here and I have this green X, if this is an outlier, most of the data is following this nice line, that is not following that line, and what that's going to do is it's actually going to pull the line up towards it. In which case, we now have this way up here and all of the other data points are below our line. That is a huge problem. That is an influential, line, influential outlier, meaning it's pulling the line towards it. If I have this red outlier, it is still really far away from all the rest of the data, but the line is gonna continue pretty much towards it. So I'm not as concerned with this guy as I am with this one. That said, all of this data is grouped really nicely together and this one is really far away. So if we look at our last example, this is what we're seeing. All of the data is grouped together and these two are really far away. If we include these, this could be considered a funnel in which case we're violating homo um, or heteroscedasticity. So this one again, I would be concerned with, but I may not delete it, whereas this one is a problem. So the first thing you wanna do is consider your outliers. Your other option is to transform your data. So if you violate homo scedasticity, this is a problem um, and you need to transform it. What you would do is you would take the variable, you'd create a new column, and you were creating a new variable. So you would take the population information and square it all the way down 
that column in Excel. Or you would cube it, or you would square root it. You don't need to do all three. Do one, rerun the regression, check the assumption, see if it fixed the plot. See if the graph looks better. If it does, great, use that one. If it doesn't, then try a different one. If that one doesn't, try a different one. If all three of these aren't fixing their problem, then that variable itself isn't gonna work for you. And this needs to be adapted with great caution, mostly in the um, interpretation stage, because you now have in your equation, so y equals beta zero plus beta one x one, that x one is now population squared or cubed or square root of population. What in the heck does square root population even mean? How do I interpret that? So you have to transfer the information back to the original when interpreting it. It's not hard, it's just a couple extra steps when you're explaining what it means. So those are your options. Best of luck meeting all of your assumptions.